Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we're going to be looking at what colors can provide you a very simple blue glow on your miniatures, both using the airbrush and by hand. At the end of the video, I'm also going to be discussing the different paints that I have tried out and found either lacking or would create a very reasonable glow effect. So uh, if you're interested in that, stay tuned to the very end of the video. <laughs> The first step is to get your model painted with the base colors of your color scheme before adding any glow. Of course, this method can be done after your model is completely painted, but if you make a mistake with only the base colors added, then you need only fix the base colors, which is much easier than fixing a model that has been entirely painted. Now that the miniature is based, you begin your first step into the glow effect, which is adding white. All glows and need white. Now for warmer glows, white can be cold or warm, but for blue, since it is a cold color, you really need a pure cold white, or the effect won't be quite as bright. It'll work, but it won't be quite as eye-catching. In this video, I'm using the Army Painters Air Matte White. Air Matte White. Because it goes through my airbrushes without fuss, it covers very well, and it is the consistency that I want. There are other whites you could use. Um, cold white from Vallejo works all right, but the most important part of any of your whites being cold and being of great coverage. You can change this consistency as you like with mediums, but not having good coverage or great opacity, in other words, it will force you to do many more layers than otherwise necessary. It'll still work, but it will be many more times longer than otherwise necessary, particularly for larger models, it might be easier for you to add your white simply through the airbrush. But I find for smaller miniatures, I like to add the white with my paintbrush. That's why I want a nice opaque white. That's why I want to make certain that white falls, flows into the crevices, because I want the most glowing part, particularly for these plasma guns, to be in the crevices. That's the thing about light that you have to take into consideration. The source of the light will be brighter and the crevices should be the brightest. So you need that white as bright as you can get in your crevices, which is why I used a thinner white paint than a thicker white paint because it will naturally quickly go into the crevices all on its own. After the white has dried, you can now add your chosen color for the glow effect. One would think it would be a fluorescent paint, yes? Nope. Don't get caught up on a paint's name. Look instead to what the paint can do. And of course, how impressively bright it is. You can easily check that by putting on it on a piece of paper towel. If it is extraordinarily bright on that piece of paper towel, you may have found yourself a fluorescent paint, no matter what it originally was used for. I did try multiple brands of fluorescent paints just to make sure my choice was the best for you. And if you would like to hear my findings on the various fluorescent paints that I did use and why they are uh, not necessarily as good as the paint I chose, you'll see my answers at the end of the video. But at this point, I chose the one and only Citadel Contrast Paint Talisar Blue. I've put it into a Vallejo dropper because I like to avoid spilling paints and I like to use my contrast through the airbrush regularly. All of my contrast paints are in dropper bottles. I would suggest you try doing the same. Actually, I have a video for it and if I recall correctly, I will add it to the description. If I do not recall, it is in my channel. Talisar Blue exceeds the other paints, in my opinion, because it goes through the airbrush without fuss. It's so vibrant a color that it requires very little layers to get it to the beautiful blue that you need and in some cases that is even greater than the fluorescent paints themselves and it dries quite fast all of which I very much enjoy when using it through a airbrush. Now to explain what I am doing here and why before you add your blue you should know that you want at least one band of that pure white left on your model. It will look as if it were the brightest source of light, the source of light, the most heated part. 
you can choose to avoid it. It will still allow for the glow effect if you have varying colors of blue rather than varying blue to white. But if you want it to be much of a brighter source, then you need to keep at least one band of white. Due to this model's size, and that I want a band of white visible on each side of the model no matter how you look, I have chosen two bands. On a similar model, I chose the band to be closer to the edge, but on this one I went middle. I do not suggest having the white right here at this edge, because one way to add to the glow effect to make it more realistic is to make sure the vibrant blue is always at the edges of the object that is glowing. Never white at the edge, always the vibrant color you want to be seen as your glow. This just happens naturally with glowing light, and you need to mimic that. Making certain that the white is never on the edge will trick your eyes into seeing a glow where there is not. Particularly for unnatural glows like blues and greens and turquoises and purples and pinks. Most every glow might be a different, be a bit different for fire, but mostly for every single glow. You could even make a black glow using that. Should I do a black glow at some point? It's kind of weird, but you could. You should let me know in the comments below if you want a black glow. Actually, you should let me know in the comments below what other glows you want to see. I was thinking turquoise would be my next. Uh, since some people like to have a turquoise plasma glow to their plasma guns. And that is pretty well as easy to do as this one, though you may require a bit of mixing more. Just a little bit. Once I am satisfied with the Talisar blue application, which you can see is just the addition of layers until you are the satisfied. Um, I chose to make the beam of white straight up and down, but you could have it pulsing instead. So instead of one beam of light, you're, you're making little balls of white. All in one line, but balls of white. Practice makes perfect on how to do that nicely. I'll leave that to your imagination. You can also make it a tighter band of white than I did, or a more gradual band of white. To each his own, really. Do as you need to, to make it good looking to you. Now, after I am satisfied, I could leave it there, or, or, I could add one other color to the mix. I take Vallejo Premium Airbrush Color Dark Blue, which is a paint that holds a wealth of color in its depths. I adore it. And I add this dark blue purple tone to the light. Now, only on the side of the Talisar Blue color that is away from the white light. This is supposed to be the darker parts of that light, and you don't want to be excessive with it. It's entirely your choice to use it at all. I do not generally use it when I'm using it on when I'm doing this effect on smaller models, um, because you would be using so little of it. But for this larger model, I think it really adds a nice touch. Here is the one I did not use it on, and here is the one that I did. For a smaller model like this Adeptus Mechanicus Ranger, the methods are much the same. You simply have to be more careful and expect to go back with your base colors and fix up any excess color that you put on it. As you can see, you can add white entirely with the airbrush if you prefer. It would be faster, but I like the extra oomph when I want a white band uh, by applying it with a paintbrush first. I decided the band of white I was going to leave would be at the bottom half of the model's plasma source. That ensures that the edge, as I say, should be the brightest blue color, and that I would only have a blue glow and no white on the backpack carrying the plasma fuel. The trick is layering until you are satisfied. Layering both the white and the blue over top of one another until you get the effect that you want. To fix any excess glow in the surrounding area, all I do is take my base color, in this case dual aluminum, and add it back to the model. I do suggest, in most cases, um, either layering or dry brushing. I'm just layering on the dual aluminum, not taking too much care in it at all, really, since I will be going back and adding highlights and more additional details as I go. Every metal surface close and facing the glow should be left blue. Everywhere else should go back to its original base color. 
if at any point you find that you overdid it and accidentally took away too much of your glow, then you can add Talisar Blue with the base that you are using and very carefully add back that glow. This works very well for miniatures that have a lot of different areas that could be glowing and you're not exactly certain where it would be glowing. And just add a bit of Talisar Blue to that base color, put it on where you think it should go, see whether it looks good, take it away if it doesn't, or leave it there if it does. Really is trial and error. Your eyes will tell you when you get it right. And if they don't, then you may need to take a break from it, wait a day or a week, you know, depending on how long you want to take, come back to it with fresh eyes and your eyes will tell you what doesn't make sense or does make sense. Glow effects can be quite hard to pull off. I do hope this basic tutorial on a basic glow effect has helped you, but I'm not done yet because I need to show you how to do it without the airbrush. It is not nearly as fun, gotta say. But using Telesar Blue mixed with the Lamium medium, any medium or varnish even that isn't gloss and isn't thinner, thinner than the paint that you're already using, Telesar Blue being, should work just fine. I use the Lamium medium because it's the consistency that I like uh, to mix with Telesar Blue to apply gentle layers of this very heavily pigmented paint. One big difference between using an airbrush and applying by hand is the amount of layers you will need to use to create the glow effect. As before, however, I do intend to leave a band of white. Unlike with my airbrush one, I do not attempt to make an even beam across. I go for more a throbbing kind of beam, and I use the method of wet blending to apply it, with very little on my paintbrush. If you put too much on your paintbrush, the grooves of the gun will run the paint too far and you'll ruin your effect expect the colors to bleed together and let that happen and when you have the effect that you want in a particular area don't touch it again until it's done drying the lamia medium takes longer than the talisar blue does to dry but it is visibly wet when it is wet so you can eyeball it to know when you can go on to the next step which will likely be adding the cold white you previously used to the lamium medium and adding back some white onto the gun. So to be clear, the colors that I'm using on this is a mix of lamium medium with colors are blue and a mix of lamium medium with the white I previously used and sometimes just lamium medium on my brush to blend the two other colors together with still very little on my brush because I do not want any bleeding beyond my control to occur. This could be smoother even more than I have done so far, but I stop here and start on the area highlights. These are harder to pull off than with the airbrush since you need to start with nothing and build up. But same as I said before, mix your Telesar blue and your base color together and add your glow effect. The more subtle layers you use, as in the more base color to Telesar blue you use, the better the effect. One exception to this is when you have red or any other warm color. Mixing the Telesar blue into the red will likely change the color too much, dulling it down or changing the hue in a way that isn't really realistic. That's simply where paint differs from light. In that case, it may be better to apply a thin layer, a very thin layer, of Telesar blue and medium directly over the base color instead. You'll have to determine that entirely on your own paints and the color scheme you use. Thankfully, you are still on only your base layer of your model, so fixing any mistakes at this point will be easy. I don't suggest you add any highlights to these blue tinted areas. It likely won't look right if you do, but if you were to add highlights, again, just add Talisar Blue to the highlight color as well, or even more carefully with highlights, Add the highlight and then add a very thin layer of Telesar Blue and medium over that. So it's all tinted in the correct color that matches the glow effect you're trying to make. If the area glow doesn't look perfect yet, then this is a stage where you can go on to paint the rest of the miniature. You've got most of the glow effect done, so you can just fix up and touch up parts as you like once you've given your eyes a break from looking at it. 
You always want to keep your eyes some time to forget what you've done so you can look at your model's appearance objectively, see what doesn't look right after more of your model's details have been picked out, and then adjust your glow accordingly. Here I've added more details of the other colors to this model, added a bit more of the area lighting, might keep changing it up, but you know, for now, that will do. And this one is the same. The ranger has been painted up in his other colors to give a better idea of what he looks like. Oh, once he's got all of his colors on, it is easier to do the area effect with the airbrush. Though, of course, the bigger the models you get, the easier it is. Let me know what you think of this Vara simple paint job in the comments below. Here's an example of a larger piece that I did by hand, I've just on the one side. Um, this one was with my formula that I've been using before, which would be the white, the Telesar blue, and the a little touch of the dark blue from Vallejo. And it, I didn't spend much time on it. You could certainly smooth it out more than I did. It just shows you that you can do it without too much difficulty. Um, and then go ahead and use the uh, Talisar blue mixed with the dark blue on a bit of the raised areas for some more reflected light or area light to add to its glory. Why did I choose Talisar blue? Uh, so Talisar blue is much, acts much the same as a premium airbrush color blue fluorescent. So if you have this one instead of this one, you will not be disappointed with how this turns out. It actually works very similar. If you're using a brush, this one is actually easier to use because this one is so pigmented that you do need to thin it down with mediums. Thin it down by pigment, by intensity, not by um, viscosity. Uh, you could use a thick medium, just avoid gloss. If you use gloss, it will not look right. Now, if you were hoping to do a glow that is underneath something glass, and you were like, glass would work great, I still would suggest avoiding gloss until after the glow is done and then layering a gloss varnish or a liquid effect, a water effect, um, over top of it. Because these just work better, faster to create that effect. So I would use either one of these. I particularly like this one because it works faster um, for through the airbrush. Not not necessarily through brush. This one would, would have probably been easier to use. I did do a couple hair. I did this little guy quickly, but this little guy's that one was done with the Vallejo Premium, and this one was done with the Vallejo Premium uh, Blue Fluorescent and the Dark Blue Premium, which you saw in the video, uh, just a touch, just with the airbrush. And uh, so both of those work, both of those work perfectly well. I didn't find anything that worked quite as well as either of these. However, um, when it comes to this one, this one that makes adds a lovely extra bit of color, this night blue ink from AK Interactive uh, works well. And I imagine the Leviden blue, which I just don't have with me at the moment, but I'm, I'm quite familiar with it. The Leviden blue would act um, in this guy's place as well, just fine. Um, for the white, the most important thing about the white is to make certain that it has good opacity, but I think I've already covered that. Um, and just no gloss. Yeah, no gloss. Uh, this clear blue and this Tamiya clear blue are gorgeous. However, they're gloss, so that's why I didn't choose them. AK Interactive Clear Blue Gloss. Well, it doesn't say it's gloss, but it is gloss and Tamiya Clear Blue is also gloss, so definitely not good for this effect, but they are really pretty if you want to make a blue, same shade as the blues that you see here, a blue metallic. Oh boy, they are both lovely for that, through the airbrush. But for using it in a brush, um... 
tidily. This one, it acts like a gel. So if you're, if you're comfortable with that, you will go with that. And then this one just acts like a liquid paint, liquid acrylic. Um, now, one thing to not use, I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't particularly suggest this acrylic fluorescent blue from uh, AK Interactive. It's just not bright enough in comparison. I like to have the beautiful brightness. Now that doesn't just, uh, mean to say that if you weren't using layers upon layers, you could uh, use this as a fluorescent blue, but it wouldn't be a quick thing because it's, its brightness is not comparable to the other ones for this particular task. Uh, Game Ink was also not usable for it. It's just too thin down with uh, not enough pigment in it. It's, it was never meant for it, but I tried it out anyway to see if it was, and that is a no. Right, there's crystal blue, which is the same color. It is opaque, it's not transparent. Um, so it would work differently through the airbrush. You could use it through the airbrush, uh, but you'd, you'd have to do a lot more cleanup when it came to the airy effect colors because this is opaque and um, it's easier to make nice color extensions beyond the glow, nice glow effects if the color that you're using is transparent. This one is opaque, it's the right color, but it is opaque. However, that does mean you can use it by hand if you wanted crystal air, crystal blue air. Uh, it's not quite as vibrant as the other two I did suggest. Um, but using it for area or reflective lighting of your glow, you could use this fine. And you could use it for the fluorescent, uh, for this particular glow, if you worked up towards it in a, in a um, wet blending fashion. Um, I'd be comfortable using it, uh, using, da -da 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 -da. I'd be comfortable using this for your main source of light and then this as a reflect light um, to, to do the little reflections. The gentle reflected light off of these guys. Uh, if you had both. And that was, those are the various paints that I used off the top of my head. If there were questions on some paint that you have and you're wondering if that would work, um, I am very, well accustomed to using a whole bunch of different paints. I do have a whole done bunch of different paints. Perhaps I just didn't happen to think of the one that you were using. So feel free to ask how effective it would be in the comments below if you were wondering. Uh, personally, I think if I were doing a more complicated glow effect, I would be, I would do the glow by hand, like this one, my, my um, lovely Vanguard. I would do it by hand and then I would do the area glow with the airbrush using the transparent paint um, and probably I would be adding thinner to the transparent paint to bring it up in layers slowly but surely. This was the quick method. The slower and thinner the layers you take, the more patience you have, the more you'll have a uh, glow effect that uh, is perfect I think this is uh, pretty well for a few minutes of work. A few minutes per miniature. Get those minis out that fast. As you saw in the video, this effect is simple, quick. There's the one that I did by hand. I'm going to be doing turquoise to finish off the plasma glow style effects, um, as well as purple glow that should be that should be fun purple's a bit tricky because you need just a touch of pink just a touch just a touch of pink but if you do it too much it doesn't look right but it should be try fun to practice with oh, well i'll catch you in the next one bye I painted these as plasma pipes, but can you imagine how dangerous they would be? Oh, if you were going to be shooting around them? Nope, 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 nope.